I would like to quickly run you through the results of the study on an integrated mark recapture and genetic approach to estimate the white shark population in South Africa. But before running into our result, I would like to define quickly what is our South African population. By looking at the DNA, we found out four major characteristics of our white sharks in South Africa. We published this paper last year and was based entirely on the genetic. Number one, we found out we, we have one South African population here. We don't have Hans by shark, Mosel by shark. We don't have separated subgroups of shark. We have one population where the shark all interbreed with each other. We found that we have the lowest genetic diversity in our population when compared to other population worldwide, such as Australia or California. And in particular, we only found four maternal lineages for white shark in South Africa, which is really low compared to Australia and California, where similar studies have been conducted. More shockingly, 89% of our shark share the same uh, genetic lineage, the same sequence of DNA. That means that the genetic diversity is really, really low. And genetic diversity is an indicator of the health status of a population. Genetic diversity is what allows a species to survive when a disease comes into the equation or when climate change changes the environment between very different individuals, there will always be someone that can cope with a new situation and give birth to the next generation so the species survive. If 89% of the animals share the same lineage, they are very likely to cope the same way with changes in the environment. And that put the population at risk. What also we could find out is that historically, our white shark population is have been historically separated from the other population worldwide. And mostly we have one unique uh, haplotype, one lineage, that doesn't link with any other uh, worldwide. It is unique for South Africa, and we have no idea where does it come from. But to get to uh, our most recent study, we utilized two uh, techniques and combined them to find out how many white sharks we still have in South Africa. First technique being photo identification. Thanks, thankfully, white shark has very unique dorsal fin. We can uh, identify each individual by taking a good photo of the dorsal fin. It works just like a fingerprint. We look at the trailing edge of the dorsal, this pattern over here. And with this, we can categorize the shark and recognize the individuals over time. Then we use genetic analysis. Everyone knows CSI and how genetic fingerprinting works. We know that we can also identify the individual based on their DNA. And that is what we did with the sharks. So we could double check the techniques with each other. And we could also estimate the population number. To do so, Mike Ratten, thanks to his company, Shark Diving Unlimited, decided to buy a sailing catamaran that was a live on board vessel that allows us to uh, work around the entire coastline. The yellow dot is where we did not find sharks, but despite our attempt, and the red dots is where we did find white shark and we could take samples from them. Uh, from April 2009 to April 2014, we were being out at sea a lot, and we could collect over 5,000 photos, uh, photo identification of the dorsal fin, and 302 genetic samples that we could then analyze. And the way we collected the sample is as follows. As you can see in the video, we use natural fish chum to uh, convince the top predator to approach our vessel. Otherwise, they will never do so. Then we play with them similarly to what cage diving operators do, with a rope and a piece of tuna at the end of it. And being predators, they tend to follow moving objects. So when they follow the tuna, they also stick the fin out of the water. And that is what allows us to take a good photo ID. After we take the photo ID, now I know which shark is which, we sterilize a biopsy sampler. And with that, we can take from the shark a little piece of tissue from the base of the dorsal fin. I say we, but I mean Mike. <laughs> He's bigger. <laughs> he can do it. And he has a much better aim than I do. So that is how it works. It's a two and a half meter long pole. We take a little piece of flesh out of the shark 
And the beauty of this technique, uh, I personally find, is that from this little piece of flesh, we could uh, perform hundreds of genetic analyses. Thanks to a PCR machine, we can perform hundreds of them with just a little piece of tissue. The other beauty of the technique it is that it is minimally invasive. We take the photo, we take this little piece of skin from an average three meter shark, who most of the time will turn around and try to find out which mosquito bite him today. From the photographic identification, I wanted to give you an example of this is the same shark that we could photograph over time, and the pattern on the rear of the dorsal fin didn't change over time was good enough to be uh, recognized. And we also take, in this case, uh, four different samples from the same animal, so that we could test with the genetic fingerprinting if we could identify the animal properly. And vice versa, if the photo ID was good enough to see that it's the same individual. And that is a different shark with a different pattern. And do you see this peaking here? That is the different shark that picks a different spot when compared to this sample from the same animal where these genetic fingerprinting picks at the same spot. So we could double check the two techniques and I was very happy when they agreed with each other. By the end of 2011, we had 426 white sharks in our database for Hansby. And what happened by uh, July 2011 is that despite we kept on collecting photo identification, the number of sharks stopped increasing the number of new sharks. In other words, we started having most of the sharks already uh, categorized in our database. And here is where we reach uh, saturation of this curve. These are the new sharks. At some point, we didn't have any more shark, And that started getting us very worried because that is a white shark mecca for the world. And when we reached 400, we already couldn't find, we struggled to get new sharks in our data set. So at this, at this stage, we could apply nice mathematical model to estimate the entire population size. We knew already that uh, Hansby is not a close uh, area for sharks. They come in and they go out and then they come back. But luckily, we have open population models that we can apply in these cases. And by applying this open population model, we came up with two estimates, depending from how I was grouping the capture of the sharks the capture mark recapture technique, that is how it is called. The most conservative result being in between three and 500 sharks for the South African coastline, because now we know that it is one population. Plus with the photo, we also have the same shark spotted, I say, in False Bay and in uh, Algoa Bay. So we, we found them swimming around. Then with the genetic, we could also use 14 microsatellite markers, and 10 is the minimum amount required to do this kind of work. And uh, 100 samples is the minimum amount of samples required to get a robust estimate. We could use 233 uh, samples from 233 unique sharks, and we use 14 microsatellite markers to estimate the effective population size. Genetic doesn't count the sharks. Genetic looks at the DNA and gives us an estimate of the breeders that successfully breed one generation ago. This number is really important because the breeders are the individuals that are required to keep the population alive. If we have 90% of juvenile and 10% of breeder and we wipe out this 10% of breeder, it doesn't matter if most of them are still here. If they're not breeding, we won't have a next generation. So genetic gives a very important um, number for our conservation purposes. And it is said that for sharks, we don't know for white sharks, but for other species of shark, 500 have been uh, estimated as the minimum amount of breeder required for maintaining evolutionary potential and maintaining uh, health, uh, health status in a species of sharks. And it didn't matter how did we analyze our data, none of our estimate reached over 350. So we are already in a situation where our number of breeders is below the minimum level required for a population to survive. We also did uh, the, start, the analysis pulling all the sharks together, only the sharks from Hansby, to see if they would have matched. And if it is true that 
Kansby was representative for the coastline, and it was. If we use only the adults, uh, it underestimates the numbers, as for all other species where this kind of study have been done. And if we use only one group of juvenile of the same size, we get to the same estimate as for putting all the sharks together. So we really tried it all to see if we were getting it wrong, but all our results came, reached the same conclusion. So to wrap it up with a mac capture, mark recapture model based on the dorsal <coughs> fin, exactly 4,389 for identification, we had an estimate in between 353 and 522 sharks with a 95% confidence interval. With the genetic and 302 samples on 233 sharks, we reach a 333 estimate in between two and 400. So the two techniques actually agreed with each other by the end of it. The problem with it is that when you have a decrease of genetic variation, like we already observed in our sharks, that will cause a reduction in the capability of the species to survive in on the long term. The evolutionary potential gets depleted. And that will cause a decline in the population number. So we are already into this spiral for white sharks. And I think that uh, it is time that now we have up-to-dated figure. It is time for, from now on to try to do something better for the species before it's going to be too late. Uh, that was it. I just would like to thank a lot Shark Diving Unlimited and Michael Rutten, without whom I won't even find the sharks. Uh, he got me under his wing and showed me where to find the shark and he sampled with me. We went out for four years uh, to do this work and it was, it was brilliant. I will never thank him enough. And the University of Stellenbosch for allowing uh, an Italian to undertake a PhD in South Africa um, with very little English some years ago. And of course, all the assistance of all the people that helped uh, on the field Everyone. Again, we, I will never thank them enough. And open for questions. That's it. <laughs>